Huawei are best known for their phones. I'm using their new P20 Pro at the moment, but now Huawei have set their sights on shaking up the premium laptop space. And I think they've done it. So this is the new Huawei MateBook X Pro, a upgraded and slightly refined version of last year's MateBook X. And it's great to see another proper competitor to the likes of the Dell XPS, Microsoft Surface Book, and Apple MacBook Pro laptops. All those companies have had years to redesign and perfect their laptops. It seems like Huawei have just come on the scene in the last couple of years and really shaken things up. Although I don't think you can deny the similarities to a certain fruit-based competitor. Not sure what you think. But as soon as you open the lid on the MateBook X Pro, it's clear the standout feature is the screen. It's a 13.9 inch LTPS LCD panel with an unrivaled 91% screen to body ratio. This is a proper edge to edge display. With bezels measuring just four millimeters thick all around the screen, it packs a little over half an inch more screen into the same body width as the MacBook Pro 13. From the off, this makes it feel like a premium device and leaves some of the competition feeling slightly last gen. Colors are vibrant, blacks are deep, and with a resolution of 3000 by 2000, it means image quality is sharp. It's also a touchscreen, which is really nice to use, and there's very little screen wobble. Brightness goes up to an above average 450 nits. It's got excellent viewing angles and can display 100% of the sRGB color gamut. Huawei have gone for a 3x2 aspect ratio screen, that's the same as the Microsoft Surface Books or the Apple MacBook Pros, which means it's not quite as wide, although I do like that for browsing the web or even playing games, but it does mean if you're watching, say, the tech chat videos on YouTube or streaming movies on Netflix, you will get letterboxing at the top and bottom of the video. In terms of the design, the slim all aluminium chassis feels well built. There's very little flex or any sharp and comfortable edges, and it comes in two colors, Mystic Silver and Space Gray, which is exactly the same name used by Apple. At 1.33 kilograms and with a thickness of 14.6 millimeters, it's almost an identical size and weight to the MacBook Pro 13. It's not the lightest laptop out there, that title goes to the LG Gram or maybe the Asus Swift 5, but it's still really portable and you'll barely notice this in your backpack. Now considering just how thin the bezel around the screen is, it's not immediately obvious where the webcam is, if it even has one. And this leads me to one of the most ingenious design solutions I've seen on a laptop in a long time. Positioned between the F6 and the F7 key, press it in and the webcam pops up. That is really, really clever. I bet pretty much everyone knows someone who puts you know, tape or plasters or band-aids over the webcam because they're afraid of people hacking in and spying on them or something. Well, you don't have to with this. You can simply press it back in and it hides it. And it also means we still get a beautifully thin bezel around the screen. But of course the downside is having a webcam down there on the keyboard means it's just as bad as the likes of the Dell XPS laptops. It's looking up your nose, it's not an ideal placement really, and although it is pretty good quality, if you're someone who does lots of video calls or Skype video conferencing, whatever you do, probably not gonna be an ideal laptop. But I do still think it is a really, really clever design, and the fact that you can just hide it like that, well, I think that's awesome. Other little neat features include the Windows Hello compatible fingerprint reader, which is built into the power button. One press and it'll boot up and log you in automatically. Typing on the MateBook feels great. The backlit, chiclet style keyboard is really nice to use, although once again, it's eerily similar to the clacky butterfly mechanism you get on the MacBook Pro laptops. And also like its rival, the MateBook here also sports a huge precision touchpad. It's smooth, responsive, and has a reassuring click. I really like the bigger size. It makes using gestures easier, and I think it just makes the laptop look more modern. So the MateBook comes in two different specs. Now pricing hasn't been confirmed for the UK or the US. In fact, it's not even been confirmed if the MateBook will be coming to the UK at all. I really hope it does. But as for pricing, the entry level model starts at around 1300 pounds, which is around $1,600. For this, you get an eighth gen Core i5-8250U quad core processor, eight gigs of RAM, a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD, but this is the top spec model, which will cost you around 400 pounds more and comes with an i7-8550U, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD, and crucially, a dedicated graphics card in the form of an NVIDIA MX150. So at 1300 pounds, this means the entry-level model is about the same price as the similarly specced MacBook Pro 13. 
The new 2018 Dell XPS 13, meanwhile, has a similar starting price of about £1,250. Both specs get the same 57.4 watt hour battery, which in my tests drained about 10% after watching an hour of YouTube at 50% brightness, a figure which is very similar to its rivals. So from my experience, you'll get around 8 to 10 hours of use between charges, but obviously that will drop more quickly if you're playing games or editing videos. So aside from the i7, double the RAM and double the storage, one of the main reasons you'd want to pay a bit extra to get the top spec MateBook X Pro is to get that graphics card, the MX150. But this is where things get a little bit more complicated because while normally the MX150 is somewhere between the integrated graphics and maybe a GTX 1050 in terms of performance, they're not all made equal. There are two variants of the MX150 and one is much slower than the other. And unfortunately, it is the slower one we've got in the MateBook. It's a 10 watt graphics chip as opposed to the full fat 25 watt version of the MX150 found in some other models. So the MX150 we have in here has a 32% slower clock speed and its RAM is running around 16% slower. So that's a bit of a shame, but it is still a lot more powerful than the integrated chip. But let's find out how it affects gaming. Most Ultrabooks are generally limited to low settings and resolutions in more demanding games, but it doesn't mean you can't play some of the latest titles. In Fortnite, I was able to achieve a steady 30 FPS using low to medium settings at 1080p. It looks good on the MateBook and is definitely playable. Now Far Cry 5 is a much more demanding beast and I had to step it down to 720p on low to get 30 FPS. PUBG fared a little bit better, returning around a 30 FPS average at 1080p with low settings. So the MateBook X Pro isn't really meant for gaming, but it does also come with a Thunderbolt 3 USB-C port though, so you could always invest in a graphics dock. Now speakers and audio quality are areas I generally gloss over a little bit in laptop reviews because they're pretty much always terrible. But that's not the case here, and it's another example of the Huawei really surprising me. Under these two quite unassuming little speaker grills on the side of the laptop comes some of the best audio quality I've ever heard from a laptop. There's actually four speakers, two tweeters under the grills and two subwoofers either side of the chassis. They're surprisingly loud and give a detailed sound with more bass than you'd expect. They're also Dolby Atmos tuned, which is meant to give something of a surround sound effect, but really it's the clarity and punchy sound that's the standout feature here. Fan noise is barely noticeable when idle or even under light load, but it can get a little bit noisy when doing more intensive tasks. I measured 35 dBs at load from where my head would be when sat in front of it, which is low, but because it's quite a harsh white noise from the fans, it can become a bit intrusive and does impact on the otherwise excellent audio when playing games or say editing 4K videos in particular. In terms of ports, we've got a 3.5mm headphone jack, a single USB 3, two USB-C ports, one of which is Thunderbolt 3 compatible, so you can hook up high resolution monitors or external graphics docks. And of course, if your phone also uses Type-C, then you can get away with carrying just one charger for both. One mark against the Pro X though, is the lack of an SD card reader, which is a little bit annoying for me as a video producer, but that might not be a big deal for you. So the hardest part about reviewing this laptop is giving it enough praise, but without it coming across as some sort of paid for sponsored ad, which this is 100% not. This is an impartial review, but I am so genuinely impressed by the quality of the MateBook X Pro. But in some ways they've taken what Apple have done with the MacBook Pro 13 and improved on it. Like with the higher res touchscreen with tiny bezels, keeping a standard type A USB port, and in the case of the top spec MateBook, offering a dedicated graphics card. Although of course it isn't the most powerful. But it's clear we have a new contender for your cash in the premium laptop arena. So I really do hope that this thing comes to the UK so everyone can buy one because it's that good. But what do you think? Would you take this over the MacBook Pro or the Dell XPS 13? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more laptop reviews from me, hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.